Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. During the 1980s, my parents, who were a young couple at the time, settled in a modest semi-detached house built in the early 20th century. Over the course of the last four decades, they have lived in the comfort of this same home. They have raised my brother and myself, witnessed the comings and goings of various neighbours, and are now enjoying their retirement. Recently, I have temporarily moved back in and thought it would be interesting to share some of the ghostly occurrences we have encountered throughout the years. By way of background, the property adjacent to ours is the oldest in the neighbourhood and has been standing for nearly a quarter of a millennium. The land on which our entire community is built was once owned by the proprietor of this historical home. According to local legend, the owner met an untimely demise either by being slain over the ownership of the land or through mental illness leading to self-inflicted harm occurring in his barn, a structure which still stands today and which is situated adjacent to our backyard. Our house, which was constructed around a century ago, was previously owned by another family who informed my parents that a tenant had passed away due to a heart attack in what is now my bedroom. Based on the encounters my family and I have experienced over the decades, we believe that our home may be home to two spirits, one of which appears to be benevolent and the other malevolent. Our awareness of the benevolent or protective ghost crystallised in one particularly remarkable incident which occurred in such an inexplicable manner that I usually refrain from sharing it. However, a few examples of other occurrences we have experienced, some of which occurred prior to my birth and have been relayed to me, are as follows. When my parents initially moved into the house, my brother and I were yet to be born, and the room that is now mine was being used as a TV room. The television set was an old-fashioned black and white model. Every Sunday morning, the TV would turn on all by itself. The volume was cranked up and a church service would be playing on the screen. My parents have said that the service was hard to make out, as the picture seemed staticky and the audio somewhat distorted. If they switched the channel, they were unable to switch it back to the service, as if it was playing on a channel that we did not receive. Turning off the TV was not always an option either, as at times it would simply turn itself back on, even louder than before. During the early 80s, my father worked full-time while my mother remained at home to study for her CPA exam. On multiple occasions, my mother would descend from her office or study space on the second floor to discover that our old front door, which was secured by a heavy and hard-to-operate deadlock, was left wide open hours after my father had left for work through the back door, the door which had always been used instead. Family members, who often stayed over or babysat, also reported many negative experiences. One instance was when my mother's two younger brothers stayed in our home while my parents were on a prolonged vacation. One of them slept in my brother's room, the other slept in my room. Sometime during the night, the uncle who was sleeping in my brother's room was awakened by the sound of his toiletry bag, which he had left on a shelf in the room, being thrown against the opposite wall. This activity in my brother's room would recur continuously, years later, but this time with a valuable Lego set that my brother had on display on his bookshelf, when time and time again, it would be thrown against the opposite wall with enough force to break it. Prior to renovating the house in the early 2000s, there was one bathroom that was extremely unnerving to use. As a child, I thought it was normal to hear the sound of footsteps approaching from down the hall and hands banging on the door. I convinced myself it was due to air pressure. We were once hosting a dinner party and another uncle excused himself to use the bathroom just as we were sitting down to eat. We had started serving the food when we heard him yell, I'm in here, I'm in here, hello, I said I'm in here. 
He came downstairs irritated, inquiring as to who had been slamming their hands on the door and shaking the doorknob. All of us had been seated around the table. On another occasion, our piano played itself. We were all gathered around the dinner table when a single note was heard from the living room. We exchanged glances, unable to fathom what we had just heard. I recall my mother asking, did the piano just play on its own? My father quickly dismissed it, stating, it's just a mouse, nothing to worry about. Just as he said this, a single note played again, but this time much louder and clearer, almost as if it was done in defiance. There were no scattered notes either, as you might expect if a mouse had actually gotten inside, but two firm and distinct notes. When I was around five or six years old, I encountered this activity firsthand. One night, as I was falling asleep, I heard the unmistakable noise of my metal blinds, located at the head of my bed, being pulled all the way up and then slowly lowering themselves back down. The sound was a prolonged, gentle, creaking noise. I looked up and could see my blinds moving upward until they were fully open and then all the way back down, completely on their own. The window was shut and the blinds could only be adjusted with a pull string. I screamed to my mother and she came running down the hall. As soon as she entered my room, the blinds froze in place. She tried to calm me down, telling me it was just a dream and checking under and around my bed for monsters before leaving. But as soon as she was back in her room, it started all over again. I screamed to her again, and as soon as she entered the room, they were again perfectly still. She was quite frustrated at this point and asked me not to call out to her again and to get some sleep. Yet again, as soon as she was back in her room, I started to hear the sound once more. I was too afraid to look up by this point and remember just burying my head in the blanket until eventually passing out to the noise. There have been countless other occurrences. All of us have sensed a feeling of oppression or of being observed within the house. Electronic devices turn on and off by themselves. As a teenager, I enjoyed playing loud rap music while home alone and the speakers would just turn off by themselves. We entertained the idea that our family, or maybe just one of us, was haunted after we experienced two other hauntings in places where we had stayed briefly while our house was under renovation. It's also worth mentioning that I previously had worked as a babysitter in the house next door and had some incredibly unsettling experiences there too. Since my return to the house, we have already experienced three incidents and it seems as if the occurrences are becoming more frequent, as two of them occurred just last night. I am considering the possibility that, as I am returning home for the first time in around five years and have brought my cat with me, maybe I have agitated or triggered something. Regardless, here are the events that have taken place recently since my return. I am currently sleeping in my brother's former room, which used to be home to our family's computer and now serves as a small office. My cat is very active at night, so we place her to rest alone in my old room, where we keep her litter box, food and so on. As you may recall, this is the same room as mentioned previously, which has a history of peculiar occurrences. A few nights ago at 4am, I was awakened by a sense of pressure. On my bed. Initially I thought it was my cat as it felt like alternating steps approaching me. However the heavy weight being exerted was enough to cause the bed springs to start making a noise so this quickly seemed unlikely. It also quickly occurred to me that my door was closed and the cat was asleep in the next room. Just as this thought became apparent to me the weight started to shift it felt like a large person had laid down directly behind me. Once again, it sounded like the bed springs were groaning and shifting as the weight settled down. I was utterly paralysed, but I eventually managed to turn on the light and check the surroundings. As expected, there was nothing or nobody there. 
However, this is when things became even more strange. I had ended up staying awake until around 5am that night, trying to calm down and enter a state of mind that would allow me to fall asleep again. Around 4.30am, I heard my father get up to use the bathroom. The next morning, he asked me why my light was on, and I mentioned to him what at the time I had dismissed as sleep paralysis. He told me what had happened to him. Apparently, he had also woken up shortly after 4am. He wasn't sure what woke him up, but as he was trying to fall back asleep, at around 4.15am, he heard my mother whisper his name, Dave. He turned around and my mother was fast asleep. She has sleep apnea and sleeps with a CPAP machine, a mask that fits tightly against her face, which she is unable to speak through. It definitely wasn't my mother. My father is a sceptic and maintains that he must have imagined it, but I could tell he felt uneasy about it. The experiences we've had in our home over the years have left us with more questions than answers. We've lived with these hauntings for many decades, and though we've come to accept them as part of our everyday lives, they continue to leave us feeling unsettled and on edge. You can only rationalise something of this nature for so long. Eventually, you need to entertain the notion that maybe there are forces out there we do not yet understand.